Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. I do hope that you're well. Today is the 25th of November. We are a month before Christmas Day, which is interesting timing to be doing this video. And actually, <clears throat> when I look back on my memories on Facebook, I recorded a Twin Flame update a year or so ago. I've probably done ones since then, but it feels as though today is the day to do this. Um, one of the reasons I'm coming on today, even though I'm feeling a little bit below par, so apologies for my, th my voice being a little bit croaky, um, is that I wanted to record this video whilst the channel is still at 144,000 followers. Um, it probably will surpass that in the next couple of days. Thank you very much for all of your support, all of the new subscribers that are finding me. It's um, very nourishing, actually, for me at this time when I'm going through some difficulties in my own life uh, linked into loss, which I've talked about in other videos. Um, so, but I want to keep the continuity going on this channel and come on when I can. <laughs> Interestingly, I've just um, shuffled this deck and this one's on the bottom of the bottom of the deck. It says share your voice. So I'm going to share your share my voice, even though it's a little bit croaky. Uh, my energy is a little bit below par because I want to say this whilst the channel is at 144,000 followers. And I'm going to explain why that's important. Really, um, before we go on as well, anything that I say in this video that contradicts other channelers, other spiritual teachers that talk about 144,000. No offence to them. There are many different uh, reflections in the lake, in the river that we all drink from. I'm just going to give you what I've got as my channel went past 144,000. More than anything, <clears throat> this is a rite of passage. And right now, I'm in the middle of the eye of the needle. Many of you are too. And I think it's important to honour this space rather than just come on all the time when everything is hunky-dory, we're feeling on top of the world. Um, this will be a hope-filled message that comes through in this video, but it's also a raw and vulnerable um, recording in many ways, what I feel is happening right now is we are being stripped bare. We're being stripped bare back to the bones of who we are, what we believe, um, what our connection is with others, particularly our divine counterpart. And it's actually a very beautiful time, even though it's a very painful time. Initiation by nature is not easy. It's not meant to be. And actually, some of what I've received as download with regards to 144,000 and Twin Flame is that many turn away from exactly this moment, from this energy that feels too difficult to go through the eye of the needle, as I'm calling it. Um, so let me go back a little bit and let me tell you about how I'd been feeling before we hit 144,000, because I'm going to explain that 144,000 is a frequency. OK, so how do you feel before you hit it? How do you feel when you're in it? How do you feel when you're through the other side of it? But of course, the whole nature of initiation with 144,000 is that once you've hit it, and this has got nothing to do really with YouTube followers, it's to do with frequency. Once you've hit it, it's always going to stay with you. The trick is to be able to integrate it, ground it, and more than anything, hold it. So let's go back a couple of weeks. I have recorded Twin Flame videos on this channel for quite some time. And it's been a narrative that has carried through, which is what the journey is all about anyway. I hadn't done a Twin Flame update for a while, and I knew that people were wanting one. I should do one. What a terrible word should is, hey? 
it's more that I could do one, but I wasn't really feeling it. And the more that I felt into it, and this is linked into initiation, I felt a strong sense of disillusionment and disappointment, wanting to throw it away, wanting to not really look at the energy anymore, not really wanting to look at the subject anymore, which I know is controversial in spiritual communities anyway, but a lot of that is via misunderstanding of what true twin flame divine counterpart connection actually is. And interestingly, the video that I made, I think about a year ago on this day was answering the um, cult-like energy that can come with twin flame and people can get hooked into the brainwashing um, and the manipulation via unscrupulous people who are not really understanding that twin flame is a frequency, not a phenomenon that you can jump on board to make a quick buck or a name for yourself. Anyhow, let's stick to today. So I was feeling this sense of disillusionment, abandonment, wanting just to jack it in, really, not really wanting to read on it anymore. I was feeling that very strongly. And then my channel here hit 144,000. And I was just noting it because I know it's a spiritual number. It's linked into many things. Uh, it's got a very strong angelic frequency as well. I know it's also in the book of Revelations. There's lots of references to 144,000. But I knew it meant something. And I suddenly then connected the dots in terms of how I'd been feeling with regards to just wanting to walk away from the whole twin flame energy, narrative, connection, all of it. Um, and then hitting the 144. And I thought, actually, that's so interesting that you're almost like feeling like you want to give up at what Metatron showed me was the final hurdle, the final lap of the race. Now, the race doesn't have to end in the way that you think it's going to end. And how you feel your race is going to end, which might be reunion, for example, may or may not happen. As I've said on previous videos, your twin flame might not even still be incarnate on this planet anymore. But reunion can happen at many different levels, um, uh, spiritually, astrally, in many different dimensions. So there was just this, you know, feeling of how ironic that you're wanting to throw it all in right at what you're being told is the last lap. And I had been visiting my dad in Yorkshire and I was sitting in the train station waiting for the train to take me home. And I was just mulling all this over. And I kid you not, as I'm thinking this, a guard comes out of a train and he's talking about something. I'm not really listening to what he's talking about, but he has quite a loud voice and he's shouting back at somebody behind him. Uh, as he walks past me, he just says really loudly, anything's possible. And I really smiled because I thought, isn't that just the whole twin flame thing? You know, anything's possible. Anything could happen. Doesn't mean it will, of course. So I smiled at that. And then I was taken to that beautiful film that I'm sure you all know, A uh, Brief Encounter, which I think is one of my favourite films ever. If you haven't seen Brief Encounter, where have you been? Where have you been? Ultimate love, so love story. Um, but again, a very tragic love story in many ways um, about a, a great love affair. Uh, but they don't end up together, actually, do they, in that film? but she holds his energy in her heart forever. And funnily enough, actually, on the same subject this morning, just flicking through social media, I realised one of the first posts that I saw was there's something going round about Titanic at the moment, the film Titanic, and that scene at the end where the old lady um, in her 90s has the locket. I think it's a locket, isn't it? That, you know, takes her back to her time with Jack. And she just drops it into the ocean, doesn't she, for all eternity. And there's, there's somebody wrote something, it said something along the lines of, yeah, you know, she drops the um, item worth millions, not appreciating maybe the uh, children that she's had with another partner, not Jack, of course, because he died in the sea, um, and, and what that money could have done 
for them, you know, it's like, great, you know. But there's such a lack of understanding, isn't there, about a special love, a special connection, which is twin flame, which might have happened in the past, because I tend to read for people in separation, but which still is very real for you and actually is priceless. No one can take that away from you. So she just drops it into the ocean and nobody else understands, you know, the significance of it. But yeah, so the train guard, anything's possible, brief encounter, that film, all of that. So I'm sitting on a very cold Yorkshire platform waiting for this train, which of course is late because we're in the UK. And um, I start writing some notes, which is what I'm looking down at. OK, so Metatron in particular starts talking to me. And this is what I've written down and then I'm going to add to it and I'm going to pull some cards for you in this reading. So what I heard was 144,000 is a frequency. I know in the Twin Flame community, there's a lot of stuff about there's only 144,000 souls. I've never particularly resonated with that. I may be wrong. I'm perfectly able to be wrong like anybody else. But what I'm getting here is 144,000 more than anything is a frequency. It's also a portal, very much like Metatron was talking about 1111. And interestingly, it was 1111 that seemed to get my channel up to 144,000 as well. So the portals seem to um, often stack up and back each other up, as it were. So 144,000 is a frequency, not an actual number of twin flames that are incarnate at any one time. Um, then I've written down 144,000. Um, I'm shown that is a chamber. It's a chamber. It's a chamber within a chamber. Uh, so I'm just hearing chamber and I'm thinking, well, is that referring to the heart's chamber? And then I'm hearing, well, yes, but it's also the king's chamber. And I'm shown the pyramid in Egypt, which has the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. I think it's the pyramid at Giza. Um, and it says here, the ch what I've written down, what I was given is the chamber is esoteric and within the heart. Will you seal it off forever? I.e., is it cursed? Do you have fear over going through the eye of the needle through this initiation? So it's cursed. I can't do it. I'm fearful of what I might find on the other side if I go into the chamber. Or will you be the explorer that goes on through, not knowing what you will find? Um, either nothing, or it could be a chamber with the greatest chamber of delights and precious jewels. Now, of course, the chamber that represents the 144,000 frequency linked into Twin Flame, you're never going to get nothing. It's more just that you have to go in with an expectation where you've let go of control of what you're going to find, very much like the great explorers did when they went into the chambers of the pyramid. The next thing I've written down here, um, Metatron says slow down just so people can think about what you, I've just said. Okay, so, okay, let me just pause before I go on. So the whole ancient Egyptian thing, I don't know about you, but probably one of my early memories is knowing that I had an Egyptian lifetime. As a child, I loved to draw and I would always draw eyes, <laughs> um, always fascinated with eyes. And it was always like an Egyptian eye, really, um, a bit like a... Um, the evil eye as well, associated it with the uh, Mediterranean energy to protect. So there's always been this link with Egypt. There's always been this knowingness with of Egypt and a life there and the pyramids holding the memories of those times. Were we kings or were we slaves? Were we pharaohs? Were we slaves? Um, that's going to be d different for all of us. Like most of the world, I've always had a complete and utter fascination with Tutankhamun, have to be honest. 
um, and Lord Carnarvon, you know, exploring and going in and the, all of that it just has always fascinated me. So it's interesting that this link with Egypt is coming up on the last lap of the journey um, for whatever reason. And I do feel today that when we pull some cards, I'd quite like to go back into the soul origins really of the connection. Um, because if you've been in separation for some time, you haven't seen each other in the physical for quite a long time, but you're meeting in astral probably. Um, and in astral, you're being invited to join together with the aid of past life memories, soul origin journeys, and more. So let's just summarize where we're up to so far. 144,000 is a frequency, not a number of people. Um, it is a chamber within a chamber. So yes, it's linked to the heart. It's also linked into Egypt. There's something about the pyramid at Giza, definitely, which I believe has both a queen's chamber and a king's chamber. And I believe recent scans of the pyramid, um, scientific scans of what they can't see is in it, have revealed secret chambers as well, secret passageways, secret pathways. And what I'm now being shown by Metatron is a blindfold being put on. And it's as though the stage of the journey we're at, if you're resonating with what I'm saying here, is as though we're being led into this secret passage or one of the chambers blindfolded. And it feels cold. It feels inhospitable. Um, it feels lonely. It is initiation. I mean, many of us have had Egyptian initiations, whether we've been buried alive in a sarcophagus or anything else. Um, so again, not wanting to do the last lap, which involves going back into the pyramid, doesn't have to be physical. It can be energetic via meditation, <coughs> asking to be taken there in sleep. Of course, scares us and we don't want to do it. We remember what happened last time, which might have been death, physical death. But as we know, death is an illusion anyway. There is just eternal life, which is why the pyramids were built in the first place. So this last lap is tied up with so much stuff. Initiation, yes. Eye of the needle, yes. Fear, yes. The question is, does love conquer all? And that leads me on to the next download I got from Metatron. I've written The Anointed Ones. So this is the thing about there's only 144,000 counterparts out there. I've written, it's kept at 144,000. No, I'm not contradicting myself, just listen. It's kept at 144,000 because many more than that are invited into the chamber, the eye of the needle, this initiatory phase, but more decline than accept. Let me repeat that. There are more than 144,000, but when it gets to this stage, more decline than accept. So that 144,000 is real in some senses, but it's linked to the ones that make it through the final lap. This final really tough test, which is going to be tougher than anything you've gone through in your life so far. But there are more potential twin flames and there are more potential counterparts that could make it to the final stage that choose to turn away. Um, so what I was picking up, this energy of just wanting to turn away, is a real thing. But we keep going if we've been on the path a long time. Um, 
and yes, I've written down here, there are always, there's always another wave behind who may say yes or say no. Because the point is that this 144,000 frequency has to be kept alive. So there's like an endless wave behind that can either say yes or say no. Because remember the 144,000 that are alive in, at any one time in any one incarnation is only based on a particular moment in time because people die people die off okay um so i'm talking about living incarnate couples um the other thing that's really important here i thought this was very interesting is that you might say well hold on a minute surely why are more people that doesn't make sense why more are declining than are saying yes it's because the bar is very high because as well as it being a very tough initiation both counterparts have to say yes and very often one person is ready, one counterpart is ready, but the other, for whatever reason, turns away and says, I'm sorry, I can't, that is too high a price, whatever. At this stage, um, this is not about um, blaming or scolding or judging because unconditional love doesn't do that. Unconditional love realizes that you and they are one anyway. And so if the counterpart, for whatever reason, feels as though they can't go through their initiation, which is happening in separation to a degree from you, even though, yes, you're joined, you don't blame, you don't judge because you realize that there is a mirror aspect in you that is also holding that as well. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's big, isn't it? <laughs> maybe just spend a moment thinking about maybe where you would be if you were offered the chalice right at the end. You might sip from the cup, would your counterpart? And also, if there's any part of you that would be like, oh, for God's sake, just take a sip <laughs> with regards to your counterpart, realise that actually you're not ready either. Um... I think this is the thing about the blindfold as well. It's as though, yeah, it's a blind test, Metatron saying. It's as though both counterparts go into the chamber, not knowing what the other will do. Um, but the other thing about this test is that it's a bit like a lie detector test. I mean, I'm putting that's very crude the way I'm putting it here. But it's as though whoever oversees this, and there are um I mean, ultimately, it's the Godhead, isn't it? But there's other beings within this chamber, one of which, yes, is Metatron. I'm also getting Uriel there. Um, others that I don't fully recognise, I don't need to, because it's going to be different for every person in their own individual chamber, as it were. Um, but when you say, yes, I'm ready, and you take the sip, those watching you in spirit know whether you actually mean it or whether you're just saying it because you want the prize. So if there's any part of you that's just saying it because like, yeah, let's get this over with. Of course, I'm going to say yes. That's not enough. That's what I mean about it being a really high bar. It's about putting this love above all else, really. Um, but not from a place of selfishness or ego or hurting another because the other thing with this um, invitation into the chamber is that it's also about divine timing so if you've jumped in there quicker than you should be there or you've cheated your way into the chamber somehow you know you found a secret entrance <laughs> um, it's not going to work because love has to be built on a foundation of not hurting others. So if you're in karmic relationships or there are soulmate relationships which still haven't played out to, the, to that finish line, because they're also valid and important for soul growth, for soul lessons, um, there isn't a get out of jail quick card, basically. Yeah. So it's very complicated when you get to this final lap. Um, and I suppose what we have to do is stay in the boat. I haven't got the card to hand, but there's a 
card that I referenced in a video recently, which showed somebody in a boat going through this dark river. And have I got the card to hand? No. Oh, yes, I have. I'll, I'll get the card. I think it was card number 29 because it rang a bell with me um, because 29 is 11. So it shows somebody, yeah, this is, this is the card, River 29. And so I'll put the card up again in a minute. Let me just read what it says in the book because this is all linked. The card is Rite of Passage. So again, we're talking about Rite of Passage. Um, it's about... The bit that I felt was particularly important was close your eyes. So imagine you're in the chamber. Imagine you're on a boat traveling through dark waters. You sense danger on either side and are unsure of what lurks below the surface. But you know that as long as you remain inside the boat, you are safe. From above, a golden light begins to shine down over you and you hear a feminine musical voice say, Remain true to yourself. Hold the course. And you realise that it is your own higher self who is in control of everything. Um, yeah, so that feels just important to imagine that you're in this chamber, but you're going through it in a boat and it's as though you're safe as long as you stay in the boat. Um, which is energetic as well. Okay, what else have I written here before we do some cards? Um, oh, th also, the, the, this is linked into a goddess, the goddess Nike, um, which might be important as well. So she seems to be one of the ones that is also uh, in this chamber. So I'm just taking my bracelets off because they're jingling. Um Jingling, jangling. Right, the last bit I've written here, uh, I've put the stage before 144,000 frequency has to be held in your body. Um, can you keep this frequency alive, um, however small, with no assurance it will ever build up again, or can they? Yeah, so it's more to do with um, 144,000 being frequency, being something that you have to hold, basically. Um yeah, right. Let's get to some cards now. So that's what I've got for you before we get going, although I've actually talked for half an hour. I've uh, <laughs> got another rite of passage card here from another deck, which I pulled earlier. And this shows the journey from child to elder. And there is definitely an energy of growing up here at this final lap. It's about emotional spiritual, emotional maturity, spiritual maturity. It's about mastery, actually. Um, you can take your childlike sense of wonder into this stage to sustain you, but you need to also have a wise head on your shoulder. The tree that you've grown over the um, pathway leading up to this point of your twin flame experience has grown strong and true and proud with good roots. Um, Okay, let's pull another couple of cards then at this stage. Okay. Right. What questions shall I ask? Let's just pull a card. Um, anything else to say at this point before we move on? So we've talked about Rite of Passage. This deck that I'm using is the Creation Codes. Is there another card wanting to speak from this deck, please? For the people watching, for the part of the Twin Flame journey that we're at at the moment. Right. Mm. Soul contract. So, as we know, but we're going to be reminded, there's no getting out of the soul contract. <laughs> um, if you've agreed to be one of these teams is what I'm hearing it. Because the point is, ultimate reunion, whether in spirit, 
and one of you still incarnate or both of you still incarnate, there's a reason why you signed up to be here at this time on this crazy planet with everything going as it is. Um, there's a soul contract here. But I feel this soul contract is also the uh, other people in your life that has to complete as well. You have to see out the soul contracts. Um, yeah, I knew that card would come up. This one's on the bottom of the deck. I kept getting this one when I was pulling on this subject a few days ago, the golden blanket. This shows the baby. The baby is the union, the reunion. Um, very content, very held, very held. It's like in utero, um, waiting to be birthed um, because there's a soul contract that says this will come, but not until other soul contracts have played out. Yeah. Okay. Right. Where to go now? Uh, the deck I'm going to use today is an unusual deck. Well, it's not an unusual deck. It's just not one I very often use. I think it's more to do with the nature of it more than anything. It's this one. It's the Enchanted Tarot. Some of you might have the Enchanted Tarot. It's a very, very old tarot deck. It's been around a long time, I think. And this is a rather beautiful version, as you can see. But there's something about the presentation of it, which is very... Um, Art deco -y. It's artistic, basically. It's there's a nod to culture. There's a no, there's a nod to romance. Actually, there's definitely a nod to romance. There's a nod to chivalry. There's a nod to old fashioned values. There's a nod to um, the past, but also the future. Nostalgia as well. I'm hearing so these qualities bind the two together. So we're going to use it and I'm going to, um, I can't shuffle it in the normal way because they're quite big cards, but I'm just going to pull a couple of cards out for us. And I'm going to pull a card for the Divine Masculine first and let's just see what's going on with the Divine Masculine energy, please, Spirit. No. <laughs> the Queen of Swords. We have the Nine of Wands on the bottom of the deck and we have the Tower on the bottom of the deck as well. I think I'll pull one more card. I feel as I want four and then I'll show you the actual cards. Let's just take this one, which is the next one at the top. That's the Eight of Pentacles. Okay. So remember, these are cards for the Divine Masculine. So we have the Queen of Swords with the Nine of... Whoops, the Nine of Wands. I think this is a nod to acknowledgement of the truth, clarity with regards to who the queen is, who the true queen is in their world. And it comes next to the tower. Um, and we've also got the eight of pentacles as well. Beautiful cards, aren't they? You see what I mean by them? They're quite, um, I don't know, vintage. I'm hearing vintage energy. So it's almost as though this love has a vintage feel to it as well. There is this defence of the Queen. Um, I now know the truth. I'm guarding that truth with my life is what I'm hearing. It might not necessarily yet have been actioned or spoken of, although of course swords are air energy, which can be communication. Um, but it just feels as though the word I'm getting with this is knowingness. There's a knowingness about who the queen is, defending her, tower moment of realisation coming in. Also, going back to the chamber in terms of what would she choose now? Um, would she stay the course or have I left it too late or not spoken up early enough or... Is it just too late? But we've got the Eight of Pentacles as well. Um, so working on defending the realm is what I'm hearing. Defending the realm. Um, what do I mean by defending the realm? I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to pull another card. Defending the realm. What do I mean by that? 
What does that mean, spirit? Divine Masculine, Defending the Realm, Eight of Pentacles. What goes with the Eight of Pentacles, please, for the Divine Masculine? The Lovers. You hear the telephone going in the background. The Lovers, the card of choice. Working on the choice. Working on the choice. Ace of Hearts on the bottom of the deck as well. Definitely feels as though there is this realization of love there's clarity over love of who is loved who is the queen basically and working on what to do with that basically is what i'm feeling working on what do i do with that now that i know um let's pull a star seed card for the divine masculine So star seed card, please, for the divine masculine, soul origin, whatever wants to come through, some sort of galactic energy. Well, I wanted to do that one, but there's another one falling out. OK, what's this? This is the Council of Light and Awakening. OK, um, no, that's interesting. You know, what I was saying defenders of the realm because I was seeing the divine masculine collective, not just one, but many defending the portal defending the frequency defending the chamber making sure that um false ones don't basically get in that there's no trickery and we've got council of light it says divine orchestration helpers in the sut in the subtle realms with awakening um energetic upgrades and a new way of being and integration so we've got the tower and we've got the card of awakening for the divine masculine so these are big big energies are they not um let's have a look at the divine mass fe feminine at this point and i'm going to keep with the same deck so let's see what's going on with the divine feminine frequencies divine feminine frequencies please uh, I'm hearing three cards for this. Divine Feminine Frequencies. The Two of Pentacles. Choice. So the Masculine's got a choice. The Feminine has got a choice. Divine Feminine. Justice. There's a lot of clearing up happening um, in the Divine Feminine's life at the moment and the King of Swords. Isn't that interesting? And then we've got the Two of Swords as well on the bottom of the deck. So we've got two twos for the Divine Feminine, Two of Swords and Two of Pentacles. But when I asked, you know, for cards for the Divine Masculine, we've got the Queen of Swords. For the Divine Feminine, we've got the King of Swords. So it's the suit of swords that's coming through very strongly for the divine counterparts. Swords are about truth. They're about truth. It's as though they're both finally really seeing each other, seeing the truth. Um, what do you do with that truth? I don't know, but that's what's happening here. There's definitely truth, being able to see the truth, um, defending the truth, standing up for the truth being the truth you know this is the thing about the 144,000 frequency it's about being it's about holding the frequency and then we've got the justice card in the middle as well um more than anything this feels like a helper in spirit to me for the divine feminine it's as though there are higher powers bringing about justice endings may maybe um to whatever needs to take place within that person's life. Um, whether it's linked into business, whether it's linked into other love, um, I don't know. But um, justice for the Divine Feminine. And we've got card number 11 again. Wow, pow powerful cards. Um, I'm going to pull one more card for that justice card. I feel as though there's something I'm not quite getting. We've also got the chariot. Let's just see. So justice. Why is the justice card coming up for the Divine Feminine, please? Why have we got justice for the Divine Feminine? The hanged man and the fool, interestingly. Um, 
That's a really interesting depiction of the fool. I'll show you that in a moment. But um, the hanged man goes with justice. And the fool, three major arcana cards. Whatever's going on in the Divine Feminine's life right now is huge um, and unavoidable and unnegotiable. Um, big energies happening, life-changing energies happening, life-affirming energies happening, clarity coming in in terms of I have to do life in a different way maybe, um, justice with the hanged man, um, being forced to see things differently, um, and the fool, look at this fool card. It looks a bit like a devil. Can you see that? Should we see what it actually says about the fool card in this deck? Because that is a very unusual looking fool. Fool, of course, if you remember, is the new beginning. The complete new beginning. Oh, right. Interestingly, this card is themed trust. So it says... Um, Wide-eyed and innocent as a newborn child the fool descends from the celestial realms and alights on a mountain top ready to begin their mystical journey on the path towards enlightenment all is new and he has learned and he has not learned to fear he lives from moment to moment going forward without premeditated thought he carries a pouch containing the memories of his past lives and the rest of the knowledge stored in the collective unconscious waiting to be used he carries a wand symbolising the pure faith of his actions. The dog leaping behind him is the animal nature of our material bodies and she's now in playful harmony with him, like a pet with a child. The dream is suffused with green, the colour of growth, and the sky is filled with clear spring light of a new season and a shining new life. Um, the fool can only tell the truth, for he has no malice or desires. Uh, you need to trust that you are a spirit born into flesh to enjoy life and grow in experience. Take a chance and see what happens. Be as open as a child. Risk seeming a bit foolish, a bit naive or a bit optimistic. A sense of humour is vital. Um, yeah. So, well, hold on to your horses, guys. <laughs> These are powerful energies we've got here. Let's pull a starseed oracle for the Divine Feminine. The crumbling. What are you clinging on to? And on the bottom of the deck, I'll take this one as well, because we had two for the Divine Masculine. We've got Pillar of Light. Your vibration is rising. You are the Oracle. Uh, but this one, the crumbling, what are you clinging on to? I mean, that's, that's a tower energy, isn't it? So the Divine Feminine being forced to... It feels interesting. It feels as though the Divine Feminine is being asked to not give up more, but because it's equal. But for whatever reason, it feels as though there's more falling away um, there's more happening within the feminine aspect at the moment than the masculine. Well, that's very interesting. My light has just fallen on the floor as I said that. It, I, the light, well, let me just, I'm going to pick it up and I'll show you. It looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> Hold on. Can you see it? I know you can't see the pretty colours because I've turned it round the other way, but that just fell over. Oh, pillar of light. <laughs> Look at that. That's what just fell over. Pillar of light. I don't even know what I was just saying. What was I just saying as that fell? Anyway, it fell and it's reaffirming this card's message. Pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. Right, let's go to the um, deck and see what that card... Let's have a little bit more on this one then. When things like that happen in videos, there's always a meaning. Pillar of light. Um, you are heaven and earth in perfect expression. A conduit for the light of the heavens to the earth. You are the rainbow bridge. Take time to meditate. Imagine yourself as a pillar of light, connecting the light of the heavens above with the earth. As the light shines through each of your chakras, you activate the rainbow bridge that many ancient scriptures speak about. 
raising your vibration and the vibration of the planet, linking the higher realms of the cosmos, guides, angels and spirit with the ancient wisdom keepers and beings of planet Earth. They dance together through you. They sing together through you. Without your body, voice and creations, neither can be expressed. For too long, you've been taught that God is outside of us, giving away our power to angels and spirit guides. But without you, they do not have a voice. Yeah. You are the oracle. Do not look for guidance outside, for you hold all the wisdom. This is absolutely what Metatron has always said to me, that they cannot do the work without us on the ground. He calls it boots on the ground. Okay. Um, and interestingly, as, as I started this video, I felt like I, was lo my, I might lose my voice. And this is now saying, you are the voice. And not just me, I'm representative of you. I'm reading for all of us. It's just, you are the voice. You are the body. You are the creation. Um, this is what twin flame is. You are the light, basically. You are the pillar of light. You are the voice made manifest on this earth. Um, you are the dance made manifest on this earth. You are the movement. You are the creation point. You are the light. Keep going. Keep going. Do not fall at this last hurdle. Um, the heavens are watching you and the heavens celebrate you and are cheering you on. Um, and it's that stage of the race. I'm going back to the race again now and that final lap. Um I've never run a marathon in my life. I probably never will, to be honest. But <coughs> when you watch it, there's this... Um, people say it was only the crowd that got me over the finish line. Where was that card about the council, the council of light? This council of light is willing the Twin Flame Collective on right now. It's willing all of them on, including the ones that get to the final lap and say, I'm sorry, I, I can't, because there'll always be another time to come back and try again. But they're also winning, willing on the ones that are going to get over the finish line um, and that will say yes. What happens then? I don't know. We haven't got to that point yet, but that's where we are today. Um, let me end. I think I'd like to use the Cosmos Elemental here. Um, it's a really good energy this one it says expand and I think that's where we are right now we're needing to expand into trust let's just spray it so the cosmos Archangel Metatron to expand into what you came to be to expand into the contract you are meant to observe and do to expand into a higher vibration of love and I'll tell you what this vibration of love feels so high I'm being shown a mountain and it's like at the at the top at the pinnacle and the air is really um light you know it's like feeling heady and but it's also beautiful it's it's the mountain top it's the pinnacle um it's within reach and again i'm being shown there are dead bodies that scatter along near the summit those that don't actually make that final climb or can't for whatever reason um and that energy is being transmuted now um but those that are linking into what I'm saying here it's just keep going keep going keep going and there's others further down the line who are willing you on and there are ones above you who are saying come on give here's my hand this is the final step um so I don't know guys it's just this is all this all came in via this 144,000 frequency uh so I guess to summarise, what are we saying here, Metatron? We are saying that 144,000 is a frequency that many turn away from because it is too rarefied and high to carry. Um, but once you have drunk from its cup, it becomes part of who you are. It 
flows into your cells, your heart, your organs, your brain, your mind, your feet. You become it. You become a beacon of light for others. And I'm being shown the ones that might not make the final hurdle also a part of this council of light, willing everybody else on that might be able to do it in this lifetime. Because remember, it, it, it requires joint agreement. It requires um, joint stamina. Yeah. Anything else to say, Metatron, in this video, please? Just get me energy if you can do it. Um, the end goal <clears throat> is a higher vibration of love made manifest on this earth. But this vibration of love made manifest on this earth also is made manifest in other dimensions, uh, being shown astral. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a bit under par. Um, but anyway, the messages are good. Nearly there. I just wanted to say something about astral before we close out. Um, by the way, this is all purging. If you've got a, a cold going on or whatever, this is all purging. Okay, this is purging out old energies. There is no coincidence in anything. Um, right, astral. Let me go to Mary Magdalene. Divine Feminine Energy. Just want to bring Mary Magdalene in. I did have the Mary Magdalene deck second sitting here. Shall I pull a card before we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Mary Magdalene. Universal Christ. So I ask about Mary Magdalene. Excuse me. And the card that comes out is the card of Christ. So... Fortunately, I have the Christ energy here as well. <laughs> Mary Magdalene Christ. Okay, so these are uh, two of the pillars that can help guide us. So let me just sink into their beautiful energy for one moment. And more than anything, it just feels like a transmission, um, a weaving of the Magdalene and Christ energies that are also in this chamber, that are within you, that are eternal, that are joined that are co-creating, that are loving, that are teaching, that are leading you home, that are leading you home. You never left home in the first place is what I'm hearing. Whatever distance, however many years, you never actually left home in the first place. You've always been home to each other. These two counterparts, you've always been home to each other. You always will be home to each other. You will find your way home. I'm going to leave it there. I hope today's session, transmission, whatever you want to call it, resonated. Let me know how you're doing in the comments. Take great care. Remember, this is initiation. Initiation requires gentleness. It requires rest. It requires pacing yourself. It requires taking care of yourself. It requires honouring yourself. It requires letting go of what is not important. It requires attending to what is. Breath by breath, moment by moment, day by day. Love is all that is. Thanks. Take care. See you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Give me a like if you've enjoyed the video. Thank you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.